Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. Today's episode is all about creating that high-end Christmas look on the cheap. Each of these DIYs is going to use products from Dollar Tree as well as some other items that I might have on hand or from the craft store, but they are all done very inexpensively. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing and becoming my crafting BFF. If you like anything in today's video, remember to hit that thumbs up, but let's go make some DIYs. This next project is a Pinterest inspired project that I saw somebody had built one and I had out of like scrap wood for a tree and I thought, oh, I have a Dollar Tree tree that would be perfect to do this. So I'm going to kind of walk you through the steps on this. So I just traced this Dollar Tree wood tree on some paper that had a really uh, barn wood looking finish on it. And you can kind of see, I just kind of cut it out there. And then I love Elmer's glue for projects like this. You guys have seen me use this dozens of times, if not more. And I just make sure to pay attention to the edges. So all of the edges will be down really good and then I just go all over the surface of the tree and then I just place this down and line it up as best as I can to make sure that no edges of the uh, wood are showing. I just use my brayer here to make sure that it goes on completely flat. I personally like using this glue stick better than I like Mod Podge. I feel like I have a much higher success rate with it and it is very, I've never had a problem with it peeling up as long as you're using the Elmer's Purple Glue. The Dollar Tree glue that I've seen that's like the Jot brand. I have not had as much success with that. So I just sanded the edges to make sure the paper was clear, but it did make the edge of the paper kind of look torn or that white color. So I just went over the edge with a little antiquing wax. And while I was there, I just made sure to go over the back of it to give it a finished look. And then you can see I just put a little bit of glue into the little hole that was up there and then um, to kind of fill it in and then just put a little antiquing wax over it. So now I'm going to build a little box to go on the bottom of the tree here. So I just had this little square. Um, they do sell little squares at Dollar Tree. This was just a scrap square that I had. And I cut some paint sticks down to be the size to go on the sides of this here. Now, if you wanted to skip this step, you could use just a little sign like that. They sell signs like that at Dollar Tree that you could use all day long and it would work just fine. I just didn't have one the exact size that I wanted. And so I thought I would just kind of make my own and show you. So I did just kind of eyeball when I cut these I kind of laid it down on my painter stick and drew the line of where I needed to cut it uh, I actually uh, these little painter sticks were thin enough that I could cut them with my scissors but you could use like a little hand saw miter saw uh, or if you have a like power miter saw that would work as well so now I did just have to file down one of the sides because I didn't quite get the measurement right. So that's why I was using my emery board there to kind of sand it down. And then I just give this a coat of that antiquing wax because it matches that wood on the tree. Absolutely perfect, I thought. And I just cover all sides of it with that wax. So now I'm just going to take this tree and I'm going to add some glue to the spots where that box will touch. And that's how I am just going to put these two together here. And so I just press that box right up against the tree and I'm going to make this a little candle stand. So I'm just showing you that you could just put a plain candle in there and embellish just a plain candle. That's one of the faux candles that I love from Amazon. I'll link those below in my description box. But I wanted to kind of make a little jar candle to put a little tea light down into. And this jar just came from Dollar Tree. And I just just removed the lid and I had some Dollar Tree ribbon I was showing you but I have this ribbon that I have on my Christmas tree and it kind of matches my decor a little bit more and it just came from Hobby Lobby so I'm just going to layer it with that red buffalo check on the bottom and then actually this green ribbon I believe came from Joann's so I'm just letting you know that but I love this green ribbon it's not quite an evergreen like it's kind of like I don't know I just love the color of it and so after I glue those two together I'm just making a little sprig with some little pieces of picks that I have that I have kind of disassembled and I just wrap some twine around the top of those to get them all pieced together and you could totally skip this step if you wanted to that ribbon looks beautiful as it is and using some twine that I tie on the top there I'm just tying that little piece of evergreen on there and then I will snip all of the tails off there because I decided I did not want any of that and then I just kind of put a little glue on the back of that evergreen there so it would glue to the front and if stay put and wouldn't move around and then I just made a little shoestring bow to go on this and I thought that was so cute you could leave it like this and it would be absolutely beautiful 
but I did have these little stars from Dollar Tree and I'm sorry that you can't see it right here. You'll see it in the finished product. Um, but I just put one of those stars at the top of the Christmas tree. And then I thought this, this is some Baker's twine that I have and you can get this at Dollar Tree also. Um, but I like to buy the red and white on Amazon cause you can actually get more of it for a better deal than you get at Dollar Tree. Uh, the other colors you get at Dollar Tree are definitely a better value, but the red and white, you can get a little bit cheaper other places, but I just wrapped it around the tree and then just tied it off. And that way I didn't have to glue it on. So if I wanted to remove it or I didn't love how it looked, I could do that. But look at how cute that is. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. I absolutely love this. I did add a little tea light into that jar. You cannot see it in this photo, but it adds the most beautiful glow, especially with all those little ridges and marks in that jar from Dollar Tree. So if you find that jar, pick it up to do this project with because it's beautiful. This DIY would be so easy to recreate with any type of sign blank that you get either at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Dollar Tree, anywhere like that, an old sign that you might have and you can use basically anything else that you have. I'm using a Christmas ornament in this one, but if there was some other little type of trinket or something, it would be super easy to use with that. But basically I'm just going to scrape all of the glitter off because we know that Dollar Tree is famous for their glitter that they put all over everything. And then I'm going to give this a really good paint of, uh, coat, excuse me, of white chalk paint and I'm going to go over it. I think it takes about two or three coats to get this completely covered to make sure that you don't see any of the background. I am going to use a piece of painter's tape as a spacer between to make some stripes on this. So I basically will lay a piece of painter's tape down, another one right underneath that for the spacer and then my next line. And then I pull up the spacer to leave the negative space that I'm going to go in and paint. So since we are doing Christmas themed, I am going to do some red paint for my stripes. You wanna make sure that when you are using any type of stencil or tape like this that you do clear off your sponge brush. I prefer to use a sponge brush. Um, it's not really a brush at all so I don't know why I'm calling it that <laughs> but my little painting sponge but you can definitely use a stencil brush that is specifically for stenciling but you want to just make sure that you seal the edges of the tape or your stencil with uh, dabbing it lightly on those and making sure that there is a little amount of paint. It's, it's better to do less paint and do more coats than go in with a big glob of paint if that makes sense. So as you can tell, as I'm tearing off the tape here, I love this satisfying feeling of pulling this off and seeing nice, crisp, clean lines. I do want to make this look a little bit weathered and worn so of course I'm going to distress it because that's what farmhouse is to me so do whatever you'd like as far as your distressing technique or none at all would also be fine with this I mean it's Christmas it doesn't have to be distressed but for it to match with my decor and everything I am going to distress this I do sand and pay attention to the corners and I also go in with a brush and some antiquing wax and go around the edges to give this that uh, farmhouse worn look on the edges. I do have this ornament from Dollar Tree that I am going to go and glue on here. Like I said, any other type of ornament that you have or any other type of trinket that you would like to use to glue on this would totally work. So I am just putting glue along the back of this, hot glue, and then I am just going to firmly place and hold this until it dries, com um, not until it dries completely, but just until it has a firm stick, if that makes sense to you. And then of course, since it's Christmas, I think that I'm going to make this into Rudolph since I do love the movie Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and the song. So I am going to put a little bit of hot glue on a little berry and I am going to stick that on his nose there to make it look like a Rudolph. A 
and look at how cute he is i think this turned out so cute it is so fun i think this is just that cute little thing either to put like on a tiered tray in your china hutch and a little shelf that you've got just something to tuck away into a nice little corner that you need to bring a little bit of fun christmas spirit to I think these little cutting boards that you're finding at Dollar Tree right now are absolutely adorable. These are found in their crafter's corner, kind of in the unfinished wood stuff that they have. I've seen them at my Dollar Tree several times. Actually, a few of the Dollar Trees that I have been to over the last few months, I've seen them. So hopefully you've been able to find them at yours. If not, I always just tell people, just keep checking. They'll eventually come. And always check DollarTree.com also. But remember on DollarTree.com to ship to your store. It saves you a lot of money instead of having to pay shipping to your home. Now that is being said, all I'm doing on this is I just paint the bottom portion white and I go up the handle just a little bit and then I'm painting the rest of the handle here with black. And the black covers really good. This is just chalkboard paint. I only needed to do one coat on that. The white I did have to do two coats. And then I'm just taking a paint stir stick. This is one that I had used. I'd cut the end off for another project. I just cut it down and I just eyeballed the size. I'm making this cute little snowman and I just wanted this to be kind of the brim of his hat. And so I just eyeballed it. I don't have an exact measurement on what I did. I just laid it down and kind of went, that looks like a good size and that's where I cut it. So I just kind of wanted a little ski wampus there. I thought that looked kind of cute there. And just using some hot glue, I put that down on the cutting board itself. And then I just glue that little brim of his hat right down there. And you can kind of see it coming together, hopefully already. And I did just get a little bit of smudging on that black. So I just kind of went over it with a little what was left on the brush there to cover that up. Now I have these half beads. These came from Amazon. I can link them down in my description box below. And um, I, these are just kind of a smaller size. And I thought they would be really cute to kind of look like pieces of coal for his eyes and his mouth. So I'm just going over them with some black paint and just making sure I get all of the edges and everything. And then on another paint stir stick, I am just cutting out a carrot nose. And I'm just kind of going from the end and cutting in towards the center at an angle, just like the shape of a carrot. And it just, cut very easily with my scissors and I was able to get that shape out. And then I did go in and sand it a lot with my uh, emery board to get rid of any rough edges or anything like that. Next, I just glue with some hot glue the eyes and the mouth on and I just kind of space them out just by eyeballing it. And on this cute little carrot nose, I'm just using some orange paint to give it that carrot color. And then after I get that completely covered, I wanna make some little ridges on the carrot just to make it give it a little dimension, make it look like an actual carrot. This is just some mineral chalk paint that I'm using with just a little flat brush here. Uh, and you just kind of, just what looks good is what I'm doing. You could completely skip this if you were a little bit afraid to kind of go in or do this and I do like a couple and then a grouping of three and just kind of offset them all the way down the edge of the carrot. Now after that completely dries I go back in with a little bit more orange paint and just kind of cover them to dull them down so they're not quite so stark and that way they look a little bit more um like they're part of the carrot, if that makes sense. I don't know. I always say if that makes sense, but hopefully you can see what I'm showing there. Sometimes I can't find the exact words that I want to use. And then I'm just going to use some hot glue on the back of this carrot, and we're going to glue it onto the face of our snowman. This cute little wooden snowflake came from a pack of wooden stickers from Dollar Tree. I just cover it with some white chalk paint and then after that dries, put some Mod Podge on it and I put a little bit of uh, glitter on there. I just thought that would be kind of a fun little thing for this little snowman's hat to have a shiny little snowflake there. This little piece of holly came from a pack of 12 from Hobby Lobby and then I glue that on and then I glue this cute little snowflake on the brim of his hat and I thought that was just the perfect little embellishment. I just think this little snowman turns out absolutely adorable. He would be perfect for a tiered tray or just anywhere you wanted this cute little snowman to smile back at you. I found these truck signs at Dollar Tree and honestly they were so cute I had no idea what to do with them. And I also had this little candy cane lane sign. Now for the candy cane lane sign, any of the Dollar Tree signs that are like this would work. It just happens to be if you look at this upside down it would still be Christmassy. So I thought it would be really cute to kind of make a little planter out of these. So all I'm going to do, now one of the trucks uh, was on clearance which I didn't know Dollar Tree had a clearance but if things get broken or things like that they do kind 
kind of mark them down. So uh, the truck that's in the back, it kind of is damaged a little bit. And so I thought it would be perfect to put it kind of behind this other truck. And so I'm just gluing the candy cane lane sign in between. And that is going to become kind of like the planter portion of this little planter box that we're making. And then um, this one was also on clearance, but honestly, there was nothing wrong with this one. Anyhow, I'm just going to measure these up because they're not completely flat on the front. Um, I had to make sure that I glued like on the hubcaps to get that candy cane lane sign on there. And then I'm just matching them up and setting it down so that way the tires will be even. So when it sits, it will sit completely flat. And after I get these glued together, the fun part comes, we get to get all of our picks and florals and embellish it really cute. For the florals that I'm using, they all come from Dollar Tree. They're just these little evergreen picks that they have, and I'm just folding them in half and then just kind of sticking them wherever. I'm not even sure that I use a full package. Anyhow, I take some of the berry picks from Dollar Tree and just pull off the different sprigs of berries, and I just kind of alternate between different florals that I have. You could customize this to look however you want. I also have these cute little icicle branches that came from Dollar Tree that I absolutely love using in all of my stuff and so I just kind of sporadically put all of these in until I think it looks good. And here's our little red truck planter put together. I think this looks so cute. It is definitely a great addition to my Christmas decor and so easy to do. What do you think of this one? I found these cute little jars at Dollar Tree and I feel like they always have some type of little jar like this. They may differ a little bit, but these have this cute little space where you could put some like a little tag or something. So in order to get paint to stick to glass, I'm just going to put a little bit of Mod Podge down in that area and let that dry. And that way when I put, I'm gonna put a little bit of chalkboard paint on these, that way it will adhere to the glass and it won't just immediately scratch off. So I'm just gonna do that on all three of these in that little area. Now I just take some chalkboard paint. I'm just using chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree and I am just going to carefully brush that into this little area. You'll have to do at least two coats on here, possibly three, just depends on how thin you're doing your coats. The thinner, the better I have learned with this. But I just take my time. I have a little bit of an angled brush that I can go in and get that curve as best I can. And the nice thing is, is where you have not put your Mod Podge, you would be able to go in with kind of like your finger or fingernail and kind of scratch off. So if you do go out of the lines, it's not a huge worry but on all three of these I just put this little bit of chalkboard paint down now you easily could uh, write with chalk uh, like a chalk marker or something to customize it that way of course we know that I don't freehand anything so I do just make a couple decals with my Cricut I have a one that says reindeer treats one that says Santa snacks and another that says Grinch goodies and I thought those were just super cute and then I am just taking two different kinds of twine here this is the baker's twine in red and green and just tying around the top and look at how simple and easy and how cute those are I would love to know what kind of treats you would put inside of each of your little jars if you were to make these. For this particular project, I'm just using a piece of scrap wood that I have. I picked up a box of scrap wood from a yard sale that I went to this summer. So I have some fun pieces and different shapes to do things with. So I'm just going to coat this. On the back, I'm gonna give this a few coats of white to make sure that it looks good from all angles. On the front, I just did around the edges where you would see. Now I'm taking this 2023 calendar from Dollar Tree and I'm taking this December page from it. I absolutely love this wreath. I think this page looks so farmhouse. I love the little wood look in the background. I think that this is so cute and I thought it would be darling to have this somewhere in my home as decor. So I'm just going to fold over the edges because the calendar page is a little bit bigger than my scrap piece of wood that I have. So after I bend those down, I'm just going to trim them off a little bit just with my little trimmer here. So that way I will be able to fit it all the way onto this block of wood. Now I cut it a little bit smaller than the block of wood because I did want a little bit of that paint to show through. I kind of wanted it to look a little rustic that 
way. So of course, tailor it to whatever size that you're doing, but I thought this was really fun. Now I am just putting down here a coat of Mod Podge before I place this down. Um, a moment ago you saw me, I just the, covered up the little calendar hole. I had taken a piece that I had trimmed off and I just used some Elmer's glue to glue that on to cover up that little hole and you cannot even see that it's there. So now I'm just lining up my page with where I want the edges to fall on my piece of wood on the background there. And I just put a thin coat of Mod Podge on there and then I do grab my Mod Podge roller or my brayer and I just kind of roll over that to make sure that I can get it as flat as possible. Now you can see there are a few little wrinkles that did develop there. The calendar pages, they really do um, not respond the best to the Mod Podge. And I know there's a lot of different techniques out there, so definitely try that. You could even just use your Elmer's glue stick, which is what I I mostly use but I kind of like to change it up a little bit but you can see that while that Mod Podge was still wet I was able to peel back carefully the pages if you feel at all like those pages are going to tear stop and don't do that just embrace the wrinkles if they're there um, I've seen I've heard people use like um, cling wrap or something like that to kind of rub on now I'm just taking a little bit of white paint and dry brushing over it to make it look like it was kind of a part of that wood and then I do take a thin layer of Mod Podge and place over over the top of this just to make uh, sure that calendar page is sealed so that way if any moisture or anything was to get on this it wouldn't bubble up it would protect it and I thought it would be really cute to just wrap a little bit of twine around this at the top so I just kind of wrap it in with just do three little wraps around kind of in different ways so you can see it's layered there and I just tie it off in the back and place a little bit of hot glue so that's not going to move anywhere I really love adding different types of embellishment and texture to different projects and I thought the twine was perfect for this one. So you can kind of see how it comes to a point in the middle there. I'm just taking some twine, wrapping it around my fingers and tying it off in the middle to make a little shoestring bow. And then I will just glue that into the center of the twine with just a little bit of hot glue. And I think this turns out so cute. It looks just like those little strands of twine were tied on with that. And I leave my tails a little bit longer because I really like the way that that looked. For how absolutely simple this DIY was, look at how beautiful it is. I am so excited to use this in my home. What did you guys think of this one? This is just a hot chocolate container that I had. We love hot chocolate at our house in the winter time. And so this is just, I think like the Stevens brand hot chocolate uh, container. So that's the size if you're wanting reference. I, I believe like Swiss Miss and Nestle, like they all probably come in about the same size. So, but any type of canister that you have would easily work for this. I'm just letting you know in case you wanna know on size reference. But I started to paint it white, which you could easily do if you don't have this little removable wallpaper from Dollar Tree. So just keep that in mind that after I painted it white, I remembered that I had this paper and I thought it would be a really cute background on here. So whatever you have, go ahead and do that, what's gonna be easiest for you. But this wallpaper, fit around perfectly. And this is something new that Dollar Tree has been carrying. I've seen a few DIYers grab some and I thought it was perfect for this project. And it fits like a glove around this canister. It just meets right up on the other side and it was the perfect fit. So I thought that would be such a cute little backdrop. For the design that I'm going to put on here, I'm going to take off of the one of the farmhouse calendars from Dollar Tree, the December page, which has this farm fresh Christmas trees graphic on here, which is absolutely darling, but I need to make it fit because it kind of would fit if I just put it on, but it was a little bulky. So I'm going to kind of trim it down a little bit. So I'm just kind of going around and seeing as far as uh, for reference, like how I would like the trees to fit, where I want them to sit. I didn't know at this point if I just wanted just the, the trees on there, if I wanted just the Christmas tree part how I wanted it to be but after I kind of played around with it for a minute I kind of decided I could fit it all on there and I knew kind of how to do it I just needed to trim everything down so that's what I'm going to do next so just trimming in and out of the branches here I do kind of like what you would consider I guess a bubble cut so it's not super exact but it is fairly close to the edges of the tree and I don't do each individual tree as you can see here I kind of go down maybe a third of the way on the next tree and then go up because the background on the calendar 
pretty much matches the background of the wallpaper that I'm using. It's not going to be super noticeable. I don't even think with white paint it would be super noticeable. So you can see I've got the Farm Fresh cut out there and I'm going to have those trees kind of go up and overlap that there. And then I just cut out the Christmas part here as well as the trees. And on this Christmas, it is very delicate. So I did just kind of go around. And honestly, guys, I've had several people comment to me that I should use some more detail scissors and I did try. I just feel more comfortable using my big scissors. I guess the moral of the story is just use what scissors work best for you and I'll do the same. Anyhow, I'm just using my good old purple school glue stick here to get these to adhere to the back. So I just put that on the back of each of my pieces that I had cut out. And then I just go through and place them of what I decide looks the best and how I kind of had designed it out in my head. After I get all of the pieces glued down, I do just kind of touch up around that silver edge there with a little bit of chalk paint. And then I do go over the design just to kind of make it blend into the wood like it was all like one cohesive piece, if that makes sense. And then this is just a wood round. I bought this at a yard sale. I bought a big bag of these, but you easily can get these. Um, I've seen them at Dollar Tree, but I don't know if they have the five inch size, but Hobby Lobby, you can get them, uh, Joann's, Michael's, anywhere. And then I am just, beating the heck out of this with my long nose pliers i you've seen me distress wood on here before i just really give this take all your aggression out on it and i kind of just really rough up those edges and everything like that and you'll see exactly what happens when i add the stain to this wood So this is just antiquing wax that I'm using. I do use Waverly's antiquing wax, but any kind that you use would easily work. Uh, even stain would, like if you wanted to use a traditional stain would work, but I just give it a really good coat and then I'm taking a baby wipe. And then when you wipe that away, it just looks like an old piece of wood that has been sitting around forever that's just aged. And I personally love the way that it looks. So again, if it's not your style, then just skip that step. And then I just take one of these finials that I bought in a pack at Hobby Lobby for a couple of dollars. It came with like five or six. I just glue that to the top. And there's the canister, so cute. But you could also use it to put some of your uh, holiday picks in there or some thing like that. I just think this looks super cute. What do you guys think of this one? Are you guys on Instagram? If you are, I would love if you would come and find me. I am Farm Charm Chic over there. I'll leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. But come and see what I'm working on. I post there quite a bit. I like to show you things that I'm working on or when I have videos ready. It's just another place to stay in touch. So if you do come find me, remember to send me a DM and say hi because I do love meeting new friends. This is just one of those chalkboard little stand frames that you get at Dollar Tree. It has a little piece on the back to help it stand up. And I'm just going to, I'm gonna paint the frame. So I'm just using some painter's tape to go around the inside of this because I wanna make sure the inside of the frame is painted, but I do not wanna deal with scratching paint off of the chalkboard surface itself. So I just make sure I line all of that up exactly how I want. And I'm going to go with just a classic red. I am using chalk paint, but acrylic paint, whatever paint you have, whatever color you wanna do, will Will work just fine so I do go around all of the edges of this and I also paint the back of it that way when you see it from all angles it looks completely finished now I'm just peeling back that painter's tape and there's always it's always so fun to peel that back and see that everything looks great now I have these stickers from Dollar Tree and I decided to use these because sometimes I use my Cricut for a lot of projects but I thought it would be fun to kind of do this and show you that you don't have to have a Cricut to do every project but definitely if you do have access to one and would rather do that or have some different letters you would want to do this with use that but I thought these letters looked really cute on this chalkboard here so I'm just using a J and a Y and I have these little peppermint um, um, it's a little sprig or floral pick that I got from Hobby Lobby. I bought it when it was 50% off, so it was like $1.50. And I'm just deciding which one I like the best. And I ultimately decide on this one right here. I thought that looked like a classic peppermint candy there. And just using some hot glue, I will just glue that in the middle to make the word joy. 
I just think that that is so cute. I love that. And I just love the red and white for Christmas with the peppermint. I just think that is so cute. And I decide that it needs a little something extra. You could definitely leave it the way that it was, but I'm just taking some different little floral picks that I have. These are the little evergreen strands that you get in a pack of like 12 from Dollar Tree. I just cut one, a few pieces of it. And then this is just a little bit of boxwood from uh, Walmart. I love to use this. It's like $1.98 and your a sprig will last you for several projects. It is wonderful stuff. So if you're at Walmart, check the floral section to grab this because I absolutely love it and it is so fun to use. And I thought it kind of added a little different element there for Christmas, um, a Christmas texture and everything. Now I have these little berries just from another pick that I've torn apart. So I'm just taking a couple off and I just put a little bit of hot glue onto the end of them and then just stick them in where I think they look best just to bring a little pop of red up to the top there. I felt that looked like a really cute holiday look there. And then I'm just taking these little curly cues also were on a pick that I had, but you could easily make some just with some floral wire. Uh, I thought a lot of times you'll find the floral wire that has the little coating on it. They're like these. And they, I just thought it added a little bit of texture. I thought it was really cute. I had a lot of fun actually picking out different pieces to put on the top of this. And I thought it was really coming together cute. This ribbon is from Dollar Tree and I just tied a double bow there. And then I'm just going to glue that right in the middle. When I glued it on there, I realized that the tails were a little bit long for how I wanted. So I do go in and kind of just cut those off uh, at an angle there. So that way, um, not really dovetail, but I guess just more a slant there. You'll see here as I trim that up, just so you can see it doesn't kind of go over the joy there or the peppermint. I thought that it needed to be shortened a little bit, but look at how cute this is. I think this is darling. It would be so cute, like on a tiered tray or even just sitting out somewhere just to bring a little bit of joy to your space. I just thought this turned out absolutely beautiful. Everything in this project came, uh, with exception of the scrap of paper, I will admit that, came from Dollar Tree, but so fun and easy to create this. I love the black and white buffalo check in this little shadow box sign. I just removed that original saying, and we'll use that, I'm sure, in another project. Um, but you can see that when I took the little three-dimensional um, brick that was there, block, whatever you want to call it, it did tear up the paper a little bit. And so I had to kind of get into my scrapbook stash and decide which to use, which I decided to stay kind of with the same buffalo check theme. I didn't have any of the bigger buffalo check. So of course you can customize this to whatever your liking is, but I'm just going to cut this paper to size and then I will just place it in. I don't glue it or anything. I just trim it as close to being the same size as I can. And then with my thumbnail, I'm just kind of pushing that in to make sure that it stays there and honestly it is in there very good it's not coming out and then I just do the fun part of kind of laying all these pieces out and deciding where I would like to put them I did have to remove the base off of the Christmas tree so it would sit flat and then I did kind of push all of the bristles flat on the back of that bottle brush tree so that way it would sit flat against the background all of this is just stuck into the shadow box using hot glue. It did take a fair amount to get that tree to stick and stay up, so just be aware of that. But I just took all these little village pieces and glued them in. You can customize this to make whatever scene you would like. I just thought this turned out so fun and so cute. I do make a little shoestring twine bow that I put up at the top. That would be completely optional. I'm not really sure if I love it or not, but it's there, and you'll have to let me know what you think of that down in the comments. And here's a look at this completely done. I think the scene is really cute and it is so fun. It is the perfect size to sit like on the bottom of like a tiered tray or just tucked into a little corner that you might need a little bit of holiday cheer. I love these little sleighs from Dollar Tree. I think even if you left it as is, it's absolutely darling. So, but we're going to kind of take it and match our decor today. So it is kind of coming apart in a few places. And so I do take just some hot glue to make sure that it's sturdy and it's all put together as well as remove that twine from the top. I will be putting some twine back on it, but we're going to take that off to work with it. Now I sand all of the glitter off that I can because it's covered in glitter and 
and glitter is fine if you're wanting to use it for your decor but when you're painting over it you want to get as much removed as you can and I'm just going to use some white paint just to cover this to give it um, the base I want it primarily to be white now on this little top part of the sleigh this crossbar here it started to peel off so I just peeled that off and then sanded it down so that it was kind of like a cardboardy type stuff there and then I just go back over it with some white paint I do two or three coats to kind of make it look really smooth now on the little rails of the sled I do just take my time and I go in with a little detail brush and paint them black so we have the black and white contrast and I do take my time with this part so that way I don't hit any of the white paint that I've already done Now you can cut out a deer from a printable online. I used my cutting machine to cut this out and I had a few people mention to me to use saran wrap over some delicate decoupage areas with my roller and I didn't have any saran wrap but I had a Ziploc bag and it actually worked really well. So thank you guys for the tip there and that just helps that his little antlers are very delicate so I just didn't want those to rip or anything on there but I did just apply that using decoupage. And then I cut out these letters because if you've watched my channel for any length of time you know that I very much struggle with hand write, like hand lettering, even my handwriting, my whole life I've struggled with it, guys. Um, and so I just used my cutting machine. Use what you have. You could easily use some stickers from Dollar Tree, whatever. I just thought it would be very cute to have it say hello deer with the little deer on there. Now I'm just taking some wooden beads on a skewer stick and I'll paint four black and four red. And I love this method of painting the beads because if you put some painter's tape between them, you can paint two separate colors on the same skewer and it's easy to kind of move them up and down and get in between it, this is a very good hack and I absolutely love it I thought these would be cute on the little tie that I'm going to do on the top So I'm just going to take some twine and tie that back onto this first little rail of my sleigh. And then I'm just going to feed these beads on and in every other one pattern there. And then I will just tie it off on that other side. I have this bow that I made for another project that I never used and so I'm just pulling it out because I thought it would be perfect for this project. It's just some buffalo check ribbon that I just did some uh, like five loops on it. So it's got two on each side with the one in the middle. I'm sorry I don't have any footage of me making this because I made it quite a while ago. And I'm just gluing it onto the side with some hot glue because I thought this sign just kind of needed a little extra fluff or something on it. And so I'm gluing that down and then what I do with the beads is glue them kind of over on the twine so they stay to the right so that way you can still see the beads they don't get lost behind the bow. I think this is such a good alternative to a wreath. I think this would be so cute hanging from a front door. If you do that, make sure you do put decoupage all over it just to protect it all. But I think this turned out absolutely adorable. Did you guys enjoy watching these DIYs? I love that they are very inexpensive to recreate. I love that each of them uses some products from Dollar Tree, some from my stash. I just love trying to come up with high-end projects and do them on the cheap. And I hope that that's what I achieved with this video and gave you a lot of inspiration. If you had a favorite, definitely let me know down in the comments. I always love hearing which is your favorite so I know better what to keep creating. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Happy crafting. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.